We are three weeks away from Easter weekend. I want to take some time to look at four passages in the book of Isaiah that all point to the servant of the Lord. There's four passages that describe the servant king, the suffering servant, the, the healer. Uh, some of those passages, uh, those four passages, Isaiah 42, 1 through 4, Isaiah 49, Isaiah 50, Isaiah 52, verse 13 through Isaiah 53. You might be familiar with that one called the suffering servant. But all these passages written by Isaiah 700 years before Jesus comes point to the person of Jesus. And we're going to look at the first one today, Isaiah 42, and it's the servant king. You see, Jesus isn't just a king. And he's not just a servant. He's the servant king. So I ask you a question. Who's somebody great that you've been around? Maybe somebody with great power and great influence. You ever been around somebody like that? You, the question is, what would make them even greater? Well, it'd be as if they would take advice from their driver or they stop on their way into the office and they interact and they have a conversation with the janitor. You see, those interactions make somebody who's great even, even greater. When you're able and willing to lay down your power, to give up your rights, and to be on equal playing field with, with another, that makes them even greater, right? The passage in Isaiah 42 says this. Let's, let's read it together. If you have your Bible, again, we're going to be looking at the servant of the Lord passages in the book of Isaiah as we head up to Easter. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. Justice, right? Who who brings justice in the world that we live in? Usually it's politicians, it's it's presidents. It's kings. We think of a king brings justice by enacting certain laws. But this servant of the Lord is not going to do so by sitting on a throne. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. Another way that people in our culture today fight for justice is they take it to the streets, right? And they protest and they they yell and sometimes they scream and they shout and they hold posters. And this passage just says he, he's not going to do it sitting on a throne. He's not going to do it by shouting in the streets. Jesus is a servant king unlike anyone else. How will Jesus bring about justice? A bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. A bruised reed. This passage is not talking about broken skin. It's, it's a bruise that goes underneath the skin. It's actually, in Hebrew, it's describing a bruised organ, a damaged organ, a bruised heart that is not visible externally, not visible on the outside. How will this servant king bring about justice? By seeing the hopeless by seeing the discouraged, by seeing those who feel like life is not worth living, by seeing the dismayed, that physically we can't see how hopeless they may feel. But this servant king will not grow faint or be discouraged till he established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his laws, verse 4. He, he will not break the reed, right? When Jesus deals with the hopeless, he does not tell them to suck it up and get your life together. He does not break the reed, but he deals gently. The servant king, he's the king, but he's so gentle. He's the king, but, but he stoops low. You see, there's no one higher than Jesus, and I would make the case in this passage, there's no one lower than Jesus, when Jesus gives up all his power in the book of John, it says he gives up all his power. When he recognizes that all power is underneath him, what does he do? He washes feet. I've never seen that sort of humility. I've never seen that before. There's no one higher than Jesus. There's no one 
lower than Jesus when he is the true servant king. What's fascinating about this passage, again, Isaiah 42, 1 through 4, the first of the passages of Isaiah pointing to Jesus as we head toward Easter, is that this servant king gets the outcome of a king without using the traditional methods of a king. Jesus will bring about justice, but he will not do so by using the typical methods of a king, by shouting in the streets and by passing laws. But he will do so by being gentle and meek and by dealing mercifully with those who feel like life is, is hopeless. He will bring about healing. Another interesting thing about this passage in, just, in verse 2, I'm sorry, the second half of verse 1, uh, we, we have this idea of this image of the baptism of Jesus. This is, uh, behold my servant whom I uphold. I think Psalms prophesies the baptism of Jesus as well. My chosen in whom my soul delights. That is word for word when God says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased at the baptism of Jesus. So Isaiah, 700 years before the baptism of Jesus, he's prophesying. God says, I have put my spirit upon him, right? The dove comes down. He will bring forth justice to the nations. I don't know where you find yourself today, what discouragement that you may be sensing and feeling deep within your bones that no one else can see. Jesus is the, the servant king who sees you and he wishes to speak tenderly to you and he and only he can really bring about healing. Uh, I look forward to looking at the other passages as we head toward Easter. Let me, let me pray. Father, thank you for this passage pointing to Jesus. Uh, a servant, but not just a servant. A king, but not just a king. I pray that we would take this passage uh, both individually, personally, um, recognizing that there are people all around us in our community who feel hopeless, who feel discouraged, who feel dismayed, and they are not yet aware that there is a servant king who shows up to bring justice in our life and to bring healing in our souls. I pray for our church as we prepare for this Easter season. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good rest of your week.